Okay, so here we are. We're going to talk about the psoas and the psoas with its relationship to posture, to uh, brain function, mood, um, as well as kidney function. Okay, so first of all, let's take a look at where the psoas is in the body and with its relationship to the organs and especially to the kidneys. So let's take a look at this. Okay, so here we are. So we can see that this is the outside of the body. We've removed the organs, the internal organs, and you can see inside here, that's psoas. Psoas, you can see it through the back. The back muscles on the left side are covered up uh, the psoas. Psoas is deeply buried in here. And you can see right on top of it is kidney. Kidney is very close and shares a lot of space with psoas. So it's going to be influenced by psoas. Okay, so what we saw is that where the position of the the psoas here is it's deep inside the body, okay? And it uh, is right here at your low, uh, lumbar vertebrae. It is the only muscle that, as well as iliacus too, but it's the only muscle that, that bridges the gap between the upper body cage and the lower body cage. Everything else is all these upper body muscles that are above, above here, above the hips, and then everything, all the lower body muscles are everything here. This is the only one that bridges the gap. Okay, <clears throat> so as can become very, very tight. It's the kind of secret muscle in terms of uh, it's buried deep within. Um, and uh, when you see people who have a very tight so as, they're going to have this bad posture where it's a, a rolled forward. You'll see them, older people, they'll walking out like this. The hips are, are rolled in, the shoulders are rolled, it's forward head posture. So everything that happens here as it's curled forward, what it does is it actually reduces the amount of neurology going to the brain and then the brain to the rest of the body because the brain's up here, it's got to go down the spinal column. So this is good posture when the psoas, that red you can see here, is in the right position. It's lengthened the way it should be. It allows you to stand up straight and when your head is your ear is stacked over your shoulder, which is stacked over your hip. These circles that you see all the way down to the bottom of your feet, if you saw a plumb line right there, well, most people are like this. And what it does is it crunches forward, okay? And it crunches these internal organs in here. And especially as we saw in the other video before, is the kidneys are in here and the kidneys can be crunched. And if the kidneys are crunched, then uh, the life force of a person, the body's ability to eliminate waste products, especially fluid, so people will get fluid retention and all kinds of other things. But what it does is it sets up all this pain going on in here, pain in the low back, because we're supposed to have this nice curvature in the low back, okay? An S-curve here, an S-curve in the neck, that act as like leaf springs in the truck in terms of it allows for this expansion and contraction uh, bouncing up and down in the spine, but it also allows for that to keep the spine and the spinal cord good and straight. Well, when that all crunches forward, okay? Now you can see here going on to uh, where the meridians are. The meridian, the, the kidney meridian is in here. So if that is tightened, you can see so as is it's going to bend you forward and it's going to start pulling on the hip the ball and socket joint that's right in here, okay? It's the only one that comes in and attaches inside the body, but it attaches inside the ball and socket joint right in here. If you can see here, the, there's the outside ball and socket, but it attaches to the inside. So if it's tight, it's going to crunch you forward. It's going to roll that leg in. It's going to make it hard for you to pull the leg out, okay? It's very guarding posture, and it's going to start crunching all of this, your guts up. And it's going to crunch your brain and everything like that, which is it's, it's going to make you more depressed. It's going to make you um, loss of sexual function because this is right where your root chakra is. This is where your fire is supposed to be. Your, your pelvis is supposed to be like this bowl of cauldron that is boiling up the fire of your, your essence in an etheric, but also in, in physiologic because this is where your digestion is. This is where things should be hot and burning up, okay, in order to separate the wheat from the chaff, to separate what is 
good for you to keep in with food as well as emotions, okay? This is the center of your emotions, okay? So when this gets crunched forward, a person can crunch forward. So us can also do another thing, which is if it's tightened on one side, as you see, your pelvis is kind of like this. It can tip, okay? So if it's tight on that side, you can see uh, right here, where uh, if the psoas is tight on this side, if you can imagine like a teeter-totter of your pelvis, the teeter-totter is when you're walking, it's supposed to stay level, okay? But if you're tipped like this, what it's going to do, these are the vertebrae, which look like, uh, if you could kind of think about them, like cinder blocks on top of inflatable tires. That's what the disc is in, be in between. But if it's going to be, they're supposed to be bouncing up and down like this, okay? But if it tips like this, because the psoas is so tight on it, on that side, and it starts to crunch that side together, what's going to happen is, is you're going to see the disc is going to bulge out that side, meaning you're going to feel the pain on this side, but it's really because that side's all contracted. This side's contracted and this side's bulging out. Oh, that's my bad side. That's the side where you're going to have the problems in. Um, but really, the secret is, is is not, you know, doctor or therapist, go to the side that hurts. No, it's go to the opposite side, the side that doesn't hurt. And usually this comes from a compensative thing, like a person hurt their knee or they have a fallen arch here. And so that one is the side and it causes this. Our goal in life is to fix what we can fix. Um, and this is, if we put your, your laser beam on anything that you should work on, uh, is this, is getting back into this position. It's getting back into where you are like a kid again and you're bouncing. So this is a good secret to how do we first start working on this, okay? There's stretches, there's all kinds of things. But let me just give you a hint, okay? So if we're walking like this, okay, and we're looking down at the floor, okay, a good thing to put yourself in better posture is to stand up right, okay? And when you walk, when you're walking out in, in the world, when you're walking in, if you've got a good stretch, you're going to look straight across, okay? Look out and about, head back, okay? And the other secret to this is if the hips are tucked back, then what you do is you walk forward, okay, with the hips. So allow almost the hips to kind of walk forward. That'll pull things forward and that'll pull your whole balance so that you're now, in the beginning, you're going to exaggerate this. You're playing with this, but this is finding where their center of gravity is so that you are standing good with weight on your heels. So this is a work in progress, but this is a work that we want, definitely want to do because uh, if we can get more in this position, so many things. This is why so many businesses are moving to stand-up desks, okay, not a sit-down desk. They notice that it reduces productivity because people are dumber. They're literally, their brain is starving, but if they could stand up right, and I always tell people this, think about a, a, a high-level lawyer or something like that. When they're on their conference call talking to important people, they're not sitting down. They're up, they got the headset on, and they're walking around, they're going, they're talking, and, and they're really, because when your body is up and moving through balance of bipedalism, that is where you have the most optimum neurology. That's when the brain works the best. And when a body is working through walking, both sides of the brain are working because this side of the brain has to control this side of the body. This side of the brain has to control this side of the body. And normally when we're standing at a counter or washing, we're doing one side, okay? Which is we're dominant on one side of the brain. But walking is the only time when we are literally using both sides because the arms swing and the legs swing is normally in the gait pattern is this arm and this leg go forward and then you're shifting your weight and you're going opposite arm and opposite leg. That means that this side of the brain is controlling this arm, okay, but this side of the brain is controlling this leg. And so when the opposite work, they're both working together and it's the only time when the body has the whole brain light up. So anything that we're doing when we're walking, whether we're doing math, whether we're singing a song or or, or working on emotional thing or anything that we do, it's kind of like uh, meditation. Is It gives a highway for the brain to do what it's doing <clears throat> through that best highway, okay? But the optimum function is not just walking, it's walking in good posture. And this is the secret of posture, is having a nice elongated psoas. 
So later we're going to show some videos, and I've done them before, but we'll show again real specific. What are some stretches? What are some things that I can do for the psoas so I need to keep working? Because it's not like I've done it and, oh, it's done. No, you work on it the rest of your life. This is what practices are about, and this is a very important practice to work on. So hope you enjoyed the video. Okay, we'll see you again.